Hey guys, Joel here from Wild Rose Builds and today we're going to talk about the JG Maker Magic 3D printer. Uh, this is an entry level 3D printer from JG Aurora, the company that made the A5S that I've shown off on the channel before, uh, which is a solid machine. And uh, this is their, I guess, answer to the Ender 3 machine that, is, that sort of dominates the entry level 3D printer market. Uh, so let's take a look at it. So the first thing I noticed right out of the box on this machine is that it's using smooth rods and linear bearings for the Y-axis, which is something that we've seen on the Prusa machines, the, the MK2, MK3 machines. Uh, and I think those result in really good print quality. They last, the bearings last a long time. Um, and they're pretty quiet, not as quiet as the, the rubber wheels and the V-slot extrusion, but uh, I think they're just as accurate and uh, I think they hold up better over time. So this machine shipped with a build plate that had that coarse build tack-like uh, material on it, and I find that stuff to be a little too aggressive. I don't think you need that much grip if you have a heated bed. Um, I like my first layer to pop off and be shiny. That's just a preference. Um, so I just put the Mark III bed that I had on here, or build plate, and uh, that, that worked fine. So a few issues I had with this printer was the filament sensor. Uh, it introduced a lot of friction on the filament. Uh, 
So I ended up just removing that. It's at a weird angle and I don't think that helps either uh, when feeding your filament in. You wanna keep your filament feed path uh, short and free of resistance and I think that filament sensor really hindered that. So I just removed it, put a piece of filament in it to, to keep it always on. Uh, I could have used a jumper, but I was a little too lazy. So that, that's that. So I have one real issue with this printer and that's the fact that it comes unassembled. You get everything assembled on the base and then from, from here up, from the bed up, is all pieces. And um, they boast on their website that it's a 10 minute assembly time. I didn't find that to be the case. This thing took me about 45 minutes to put together. And I've built quite a few printers. I've probably built two dozen printers at this point. And I just don't think that's good for the entry level printer market. I think if this is your first printer, you don't want to be putting that many parts together. I think they should pre-assemble all of this for you and just have you bolt it onto the base. I really don't think that's gonna be a good end user experience for someone who hasn't built a printer. Um, I know when I got my first machine, it took me weeks to put together. It was extremely frustrating. And if I could have bought one that was mostly assembled, I think the barrier to entry to get in would, would have been a lot easier, or the uh, learning curve to start 3D printing would have been a lot smoother. So as I was assembling this printer, I realized that none of the wheels had concentric nuts on them, and that's how you tighten the wheels against the aluminum extrusion uh, to keep everything snug. So they had obviously predetermined uh, tolerance to have these wheels at. Uh, and I don't think that's a great idea. As you can see here on the X axis, uh, I have some flat spots on these wheels because the tolerance is too tight. And when you leave it for a period of time, the rubber wheels compress and you get these flat spots, just like if you were to do a power slide on your skateboard, right? And that's gonna result in some weird artifacts in your prints. So <clears throat> it's a weird decision not to put those, those concentric nuts on there. Maybe they thought it'd be easier for people to put together, but I don't think that's the case. And I think it actually hinders this machine. It's running a stock uh, Marlin G-code. It's got the classic rotary encoder. This one is good. Uh, some machines come with really bad encoders. This one I found was great. Um, I think that's more of a lottery thing there, a, a parts lottery, but uh, yeah, that is what it is. So in conclusion, I'd say this is a fine 3D printer. Uh, again, the price point of $230 is pretty easy to, uh, to justify. The print quality is fine, um, but in 2020, I don't think you can get away with just fine print quality. Uh, I think for a hundred more dollars, you could buy something like the Artillery Genius, or uh, you could even look into an Ender 3, which has a wide variety of community-made mods that is gonna help you uh, bump your print quality up just a bit more. Um, so I think this is a hard printer to recommend just due to the fact that it's just okay. Um, there's not a whole lot you could upgrade on this. The stepper drivers are soldered right to the board, uh, so you couldn't upgrade to the, the more quiet TMC drivers. Um, I think you're gonna have a hard time upgrading the hot end on this thing, unless you wanna design all that from scratch and, and figure out the firmware. I would go with a machine that has a bunch of known upgrades and mods for it and a ton of community support. Um, and there's quite a number of machines like that. Yeah, so that's my take on the JG Maker Magic 3D printer. Um, if you guys have questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Uh, and if you wanna see more time lapses, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.